follow up on that a little bit. The reason that we are working with folks like Mid Columbia Fisheries is because there is such a need for this work in our county that we can't possibly do it all by ourselves. And so we're grateful for our partners that work um, in the county. Mid Columbia Fisheries is one. Um, Yakima Nation is here doing quite a bit of work. Um, WDFW provides technical assistance to some landowners. The Kittitas Conservation Trust is doing quite a bit of restoration work. And so all of us really do um, try to work together in, in feed projects to one another, how, you know, however is the best fit. And so that was the case with your project um, is that Mid Columbia Fisheries was the best fit to do it. And we're, we were thrilled to be able to provide funding for that um, to make sure that it happened. So just a couple more things here. Um, so in the RCW, it talks about five-year plans for the conservation districts, and we did just update ours. So our plan is now current um, through 2026. And um, we do have, I just did a screenshot of this, this portion, the very first part of it. It's actually quite a bit longer with all of our priorities and things, but it does talk about our, um, our mission and vision and who we serve and our function and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, we take these statements very seriously. Um, and I think, I think I'll just focus on the vision statement that we, we want to be recognized by all private landowners as a source of financial, technical, educational assistance um, in the county and by those local, state, and federal agencies um, as the organization of choice to implement these kind of projects. Like we, we want people to think of us that way. The State Conservation Commission, we've worked, they work with us quite a bit on outreach, and we've worked on what's sort of our um, 30 second elevator speech for what a conservation district is. And um, I do like the statement that they came up with that conservation districts are the hub um, of the technical assistance and the grassroots on the ground folks who, who know what their county needs, that we, that we are a hub. And I really like that, um, that visual as well. And then just a brief slide here about um, informing the public. So all of the different ways that I mentioned that we, that we try to do that. Um, and I also have a screenshot here of our biennial report of accomplishments. So all the conservation districts in the state submit this information to the Conservation Commission. It goes in a big book um, that is published and shared um, in this, this day and age of uh, attention. Uh, this one pager kind of thing for two years worth of work is really hard to do for all of the work that we have going on, but it is what, um, it is what can be shared with legislators and others that we know that they will actually look at. And so um, this, this one talks a little bit about the sprinkler conservation projects that we've done, water conservation projects we've done, um, uh, 19 projects on 1,000 acres in the last uh, couple or three years, um, uh, plantings that we've done. Um, in addition to what Catherine talked about, um, we've probably done another, at least as much planting as was done on her property, um, on other properties, both Upland and Riparian um, in the county. Uh, we partner with the Thorpe School District, who's doing a farm to school project, and so they built a greenhouse and they have a crop area and we help them with pollinator um, strips there and with a little bit of wildlife planting. And so um, we really want to be used where we can be the most useful to folks. So um, and I think that's it. So the next, uh, the next portion part of this presentation is out about our conservation district elections. And um, I can say I've been with the conservation district now, next month will be 25 years. And so I've seen things change and then change back and then change again, kind of in how elections are being held. Um, there was some discussion in the late 90s before I started about putting um, conservation districts on the general ballot. Um, there was a lot of discussion about what that would cost conservation districts to be able to do that, to be on the general ballot. Um, and a lot of concern, um, our conservation district supervisors are, um, they're not all farmers, but there are a lot of farmers and farmers are notoriously frugal with their money. And I think there's a very strong feeling that they want as much of our money to go out on the ground helping resources and helping um, landowners as possible. And so anything that's a big cost to the district is a concern. But so, Anna, so Anna, could I clarify something for sure. folks? Just, could you explain why you would have to pay for the election? Yeah, so we are our own entities. We're not part of the county. There is no one else to pay for our elections. So it would have to be paid for by the conservation district. So um, 
the way that our elections are set up, um, we are actually uh, statutorily accepted from being on the general ballot. Um, we, along with, I think, public utility districts, and there's a couple of other special districts are specifically listed um, as saying that our, our elections will be held um, you know, at times prescribed in the law specifically applicable to us. So if you look at what's applicable to us, you go back to our 80, um, RCW 8908, the Conservation Commission is tasked with establishing procedures for our elections. Um, they have done that in the Washington Administrative Code 135-110. Um, and then I just pulled out, there's a few other things about elections, but um, RCW 8908-190 says that our elections have to occur during the first quarter of the year. And so, um, so that means that we're never going to be on the November ballot the way that we're set up now. So for our conservation district for elections this year, who can be a candidate for our board? You have to be a registered voter. You have to be a registered voter within our conservation district boundaries. So our conservation district includes all the unincorporated areas of Kittitas County and the cities of Clay Elm and Roslyn because they um, opted into the district. If the other cities want in, they have to take action. Their city councils have to take action to decide to opt in. So that's why Kittitas, Ellensburg, and South Clay Elm are not within the district boundaries. There is a requirement that two of the three elected um, board members be landowners or operators, which is interpreted as farmers, and one of the two appointed positions. So um, it's three of the five, but it's you know two of the three and one of the two. Um, so there's that. I, there's a, always that one to look at um, when you're looking at who can be a candidate. Who is eligible to vote? So any registered voter within our district boundaries is um, is eligible to vote. You don't have to be a landowner. You don't have to be a farmer. Um, that requirement does not apply to, um, to the district voter. Our voters do have to request a ballot. So if we um, select the option to do a mail-in ballot, it is required that, that um, the voters request a ballot from us. Now, in the past, we have done, um, we have done poll site elections, although that has been quite a long time ago. Um, then the rules changed a little bit. And if you only had one applicant, one candidate file the forms um, to be a candidate and they were the incumbent, there was an option to automatically reelect and cancel the election. That went on for several years. Last year, that was changed. So last year was the first election that we had actually run in ooh, several years. I think we hadn't actually done one here since 20. 14, I believe, um, was the last time we ran an election. So we were trying to keep it on a um, standard date. And so we picked the second Tuesday in February. Last year, there was no other election happening. And so it was just us um, and just our process. This year, there is, of course, you guys know, a general ballot going out with um, school board levies. I think it's, is it exclusively school board levies, I believe. Um, which is, as you said, separate from um, what we are doing. 